I recently purchased a 2016 Thor Ace 30.2 Class A RV. Once I got it, I realized that the front driver's side hydraulic jack had a leak. It was pretty significant, and it was something I knew I was going to need to do something about. So uh, I started doing some research online, and I found that uh, I could not find replacement seals. Uh, no one... Uh, I couldn't find anyone that sold any replacement seals or any kits to repair hydraulic jacks on RVs. So um, I decided I would try to take it apart and see if I could find seals to replace to fix it. So right uh, where I'm pointing here is where it was leaking from. Uh, there is the body of the jack and a lower aluminum plate and it was leaking from in between there. I... Uh, want to make a disclaimer. Uh, I'm not a professional. I uh, don't um, wish to uh, show you how to you know, safely work on vehicles. Uh, you're going to have to re refer to YouTube or uh, uh, automotive manuals on proper uh, safety while working on vehicles for that kind of stuff. Uh, but you are going to need uh, at least three tools to uh, complete this project. Uh, it's going to be an 11 16 box wrench for the three hydraulic lines up top. You'll need a 3 quarter inch socket for the six bolts that secure the jack to the frame. And then later on you're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench to remove the plate from the bottom of the jack. Uh, Lippert uses hydraulic fluid. Uh, it's transmission fluid as hydraulic fluid for their system. And uh, to buy a new jack, it was going to be around $600, so I decided I'd pull this apart and see if I could fix it. Uh, if I can't, I'll just buy a new one, but uh, I was pretty confident that I could. Once I removed the jack from the vehicle, I took it over to the workbench and I removed the foot. The foot was secured onto the jack with a large bolt. That bolt was finger tight. I was able to remove that with no problem. That's kind of a friction fit. You'll see an O-ring on that bolt and uh, just kind of holds everything together. All right, so there's the bottom of the of the jack there. That's the 14 millimeter wrench. Uh, there's three bolts that you'll need to remove to get that uh, plate off the bottom. And uh, so once you once you take three bolts out, you'll notice one of the bolts has a washer on it. So you'll want to pay attention to how that plate comes off. You'll want to put it back on the same way. Uh, the one bolt that does have the washer, I believe that holds hydraulic pressure. So you'll want to make sure that you return uh, all those bolts to the same holes. Now once you take the three bolts out, um, the, the plate, I could not wiggle it off using my hand. Uh, I didn't have enough strength to move it. So what I did was I put a larger screwdriver in the two bottom bolt holes, wiggled it back and forth, and that crack uh, slightly enlarged. I was able to fit that small screwdriver in there and work it around. kind of just went around and around and slowly expanded the hole or the crack until I could fit that larger screwdriver in. Uh, didn't mess up the metal, uh, didn't beat on it with that hammer, uh, didn't have to. It, it, it came off pretty smoothly after that. So uh, once you do crack that open, there's quite a bit of transmission fluid in there. So you want to make sure that you have a container and hold it over top of the container so that uh, you can drain it without getting it all over the place. So um, <clears throat> I knew that uh, my local hydraulic store... Uh, in uh, the area that I live, it's called Ben's Hydraulics. They're very helpful. I've gone to them before for different things, and they've always uh, always have what I need. So uh, once I popped this apart, I did notice that there was two seals in there. I learned that that is called an O-ring backer. So there's an O-ring and an O-ring backer. And the O-ring backer was damaged, and I believe that was causing my leak. So there I'm just pointing out the difference between the holes. The one up top that I'm pointing to now appears to be more substantial than the other two. That's the front bolt hole that has the uh, bolt with the washer. So the internal seals on this plate here, they looked fine. I uh, didn't have any leaks from inside. It was just the external leak. So this is the next morning. I got my new seals. They were less than $5 and uh, they had them in stock. They knew exactly what I needed. Uh, I believe they're pretty common parts. So I went ahead and installed those. Due to the fact that Lippert uses transmission fluid for their hydraulic fluid, I went ahead and coated all the seals in transmission fluid and reinstalled them. I was able to push the plate back on, uh, tighten the bolts up with a 14 millimeter wrench, and uh, everything was looking good. I was pretty confident that everything was going to work out. 
So uh, that's the bolt with the washer. Again, that goes in that front rib there. And I believe that is the one that does hold hydraulic pressure. Uh, a second ago, you saw me holding anti-seize. That was for the six large bolts, the three quarter inch bolts that secured to the frame. I'm a big fan of anti-seize when you take something apart. Uh, that way, if you ever have to take it apart again, it, it comes apart more easily. So here it is back on the vehicle. Uh, I have all six bolts back in. I re-secured the lines. Again, it's three lines. With uh, the Lippert system, uh, you want to look at the manual and see how to purge your system. Uh, if I recall correctly, it was uh, self-purging and uh, you just cycle it in and out until the bubbles are gone. So uh, I did test it out. It worked great. I fixed it for less than five bucks and uh, no more leak. So I uh, hope this video helps you out and saves you a little bit of money. Have a good one.